Okay, uh, welcome to uh, our latest YouTube video. I'm here with my colleague, James Sayer. And today we're gonna be taking a look in, at Security Center in the Google Workspace Admin Console. And specifically, we're gonna look at rules and alerts and why you should think about using them in your school. So hi, James, how's it going? Hi, Dan, yeah, very good, thank you. Great, yeah, let, let's kick it off and take a look. Okay, so here we are. We're actually in the security center from the admin console. And so we're actually gonna be looking at this, but this is an overview of the security dashboard that you get with Education Plus. We're gonna revisit this in a future video. Um, there's a lot of very, very useful features here. What we're gonna be specifically looking at today is setting up rules to alert admins of any external sharing of files or other behavior that maybe you don't want to be happening on your domain. Now, there's a lot of things that you can do with these rules. We're going to focus on one specific use, one specific scenario. So if I come down here to the bottom of the uh, menu option on the ad on admin console, we have rules just down here. And we can see that we have a number of different rules already set up. But what are these for? So these rules, basically you're setting up a query in the admin console for a specific action. And then based upon that action, you can then create an alert or you can change the visibility of a file or you can change the sharing options for a file. Let's have right. a look. So we have a couple of options. We're actually gonna do, we're gonna use a create rule option here. If you click under templates, and this will become a little bit more clearer later on, under templates, you have a number of predefined rules that you can use. These are pretty country specific for uh, US, Spain, and UK talking about um, per, uh, PII information, personally identifiable information. We're not going to use a template, so that's a good place to start. Instead, we're going to create a custom rule. I think it's good to say about the templates. What they will do is, for example, if you take the UK one, they'll have a bunch of passport numbers in UK format, national insurance number in UK format, driving license, etc. So they'll have pre populated. Um, you know, format standards for each of these things. Yeah, and another one actually, the UK one has the NHS number, so a hospital number, for example. Of course, if you've got those hospital numbers stored for your students, you don't want those being shared externally. And yeah. so that's a really good example of why we would want to protect those files. So we're gonna be talking about data protection. So under create rule, we can click on data protection. So in this scenario, we're gonna consider credit card data. So imagine we have an admin team, they have access to the school credit card, but we don't want that being shared outside of the domain. So we want to prevent sharing of any credit card information outside of a domain. So we're gonna go ahead and give this rule a name. Of course, we, we could type in a description. So prevent external sharing of credit card. And then down here, we can choose the scope. Now the scope is really just saying which organizational units or groups do you want to apply this to? We're gonna apply this to the entire domain. And we click on continue. Now for data protect protection at the moment, we're really talking about anything that is within Google Drive. And there's only one option for that. And that's when files are modified. So we'll click on file modified. And now we need to consider the query or the condition that needs to be matched. So we imagine the scenario where we have a document the admin team is working on and they mistakenly put the credit card number in that document and that document is already shared outside of a domain. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna add a condition. Now the first thing we want to do is what are we matching against? Well, in this case, we're gonna match against all content in a file. Now, under value, we have a few different options. We have contain, so you could type in a keyword, or we could use regex, so regular expression. We could build up a search string for if you had, for example, I'm here in Thailand, Thai ID cards have a specific string we could match against, but we're gonna use default detector. Now, default detector means that we can choose any of these predefined search strings. And so we're gonna scroll down, we can see obviously China passport, we've got things for Colombia, 
I'm going to scroll down to global. And under global, we have credit card number. So this is a predefined string that is already built in. So we don't need to code anything. We don't need to think, think about how that would look. Next, under likelihood threshold. So how likely is a match? Now, if you think about a credit card number, it's fairly unique. It's four groups of four numbers in most cases. So we're going to match on a low confidence. If you were to choose very likely, that would mean, to give you an example with percentages, perhaps a 95 percentage confidence that, that we've matched against a credit card. I don't really know how um, strict these are, but you could probably test your model, practice with your model to see, see how well it works. Yeah, I think we're it's important to say the, with these levels, you need, to, you need to test it out and, and try with some numbers because it is, you know, it's not an absolute block or doesn't block. It's, it's based on percentages. Yeah, absolutely. And you can have a student project with a 16 digit number that may also match against it. So we're going to go for a possible match. Now, when it comes to the minimum number of unique matches, so it's going to look for this string now. And what is the minimum, minimum number of times it needs to be matched? Well, in this case, the credit card, it really only needs to match one time before we're going to trigger this rule. So unique matches one and then minimum match count one as well. OK, so once we set that up, we're going to continue. So now it's going to be looking for these credit cards. Now, what happens when it finds one? So it matches credit card. What is going to happen? We have a couple of different options. We can completely entirely block external sharing. We can warn on external sharing, or we could just disable download, print, and copy for commenters and uh, viewers. In this case, we're going to block external sharing. Now, once we save this, that is going to block external sharing of possible matches of credit card. But we might also want to know, we might want to get an alert. An alert would be good, especially when we've just created this rule to see what's being matched against it. If we suddenly find hundreds of documents being matched against credit card, we either have a big security breach or it's matching a lot of student projects. So we might want to go through to alerts. That's credit card financial data. So we're going to create a high level of alert. And then the checkbox here, we're going to send it to the alert center. We'll go into the alert center in a moment. The alert center will list down all the alerts on your domain, and then you can investigate those further. In addition to sending to the alert center, you could also send email notifications to super administrators or anybody else. Perhaps the controller of the credit card would like to know uh, when the credit card has been exposed. And so you could add those email recipients here. I'm going to go ahead and continue. Just going to show you a quick overview of the rule that we've created. It's, looking, it's uh, the credit card rule. It's looking for when a file is modified and it's looking for this global credit card number. We'll go ahead and create that rule. When you create the rule, you can make it active straight away or you could just leave it as, as a draft so it's inactive. We're going to make this active. OK, so now we can see that our list of rules has been updated. So it's block external sharing. Now, what happens when a document matches against that? OK. So we've created our rule. And what we want to do now is to go and see if it's working. We can go through to the security center here and click on the alert center. When I click on alert center, what I'm going to see down here is I'm going to list, see a list of all of the alerts which are coming into the domain. And we can see here that our newly created credit card filter has actually flagged several files here. So it should be flagged four times. So data loss prevention, that is the type of alert that we're getting. We can see that it's flagged uh, credit card. We can click on any one of these and then see details of the alert. What we can do now is from under this, we can actually, of course, see the owner of the file. We can request for access to it, or we can dive deeper and see what are the details are behind this document. OK, Dan, so that's how you create a rule, and then you see the alerts that have been set up within the alert center.
Fantastic. And I think this is something that could be useful for all admins in schools. So please check it out. If you enjoyed the video, please, uh, please like or, or share. It would be fantastic as well. Just one final thing. If you see the link at the bottom of the screen, uh, Apps Events is a partner for Google Workspace Education Plus. It's the premium version. It gives you a lot of amazing teaching and learning and security and admin features. We're working with tons of schools. And if, you, if you're interested, we can even put you in touch with a school who's using it to get their feedback. But you can try it at 60 days, completely free, no obligation. And if you don't want to carry on, we'll just deactivate it. So check it out. James, thanks very much. Great video. And let's do another one soon. Thanks, Dan. If anybody's watching this or wondering about data loss prevention for the domain, feel free to reach out to us. We can help you work, walk through all of the contributions.